Hi, welcome to Type Providers, Data as Code. This section of the course is about type providers, a unique F-sharp feature that gives it a lot of special power in areas of data-related programming. This one is an introduction to type providers. I'll tell you how to get the type provider code into your program and how to create and use a simple type provider. The remaining videos will be addressing type providers for specific kinds of data. In the second video, we'll look at the relational database type providers, which were part of the original release of this technology. I'll discuss some of my issues with using this against databases, as well as show you some of the strengths. The next video is on working with web APIs using type providers, and I highly recommend this topic. I think this is a wonderful use of type provider technology that provides a lot of advantages when you are tasked with writing your side, the client side, of interactions with outside web APIs. The next video is on using Azure, which carries on the themes of the previous one, Azure being the original founder and contributor of F-Sharp to the world. They run their uh, cloud business in Azure, and so we'll take a look at some of the uses you can make of type providers to work with a large-scale commercial online service. Welcome to Using Type Providers in Your Program. In this video, I'll explain how F-Sharp type providers turn data into code, and how this compares to other methods of doing this sort of thing. Then I'll show how to add the necessary NuGet packages, and we'll write our first type provider to some simple queries of a fairly complex online data source. It's commonplace now to say that we live in the midst of a data explosion. Just look at all these cars. Suppose every car has one cell phone in it, and some probably have two or three if there are passengers. And each cell phone is connected to GPS, tracking its location, and they're all going at the same time. That's a lot of data moving in a continuous but disconnected, organized but not completely predictable fashion. Data sources like this require tools that may be different from the ones we're used to using. F-sharp type providers are that kind of tool. When we say type providers turn data into code, what we really mean is they turn data into types. Types are what the F-Sharp compiler uses to verify that all the code you write in your program is correct. Types are also what allow IntelliSense to show us what's inside the different objects and their child objects. Type providers are generated by the F-Sharp compiler at compile time, and this has several advantages. First, the type provider is capable of generating extremely fast IL assembly code. Second, the compiler doesn't require any additional tools, so there's no dependency on, say, what particular IDE you want to use or any non-compiler, non-F-sharp tools in order to create and take advantage of type providers. Another benefit is that because you have to regenerate your type providers every time you compile the code, it's not so easy to let the generation of your types get out of sync with the actual data. The first version of type providers was part of the F-Sharp 3.0 release. That version probably won't continue to be updated. The most recent version available on NuGet was released on January 26, 2016. Instead, type providers have moved on to F-Sharp 4 with the current line of versions, which are available on NuGet starting with version 1.0 all the way up to the present. The F-Sharp 3.0 version of type providers generated a lot of attention, and you can find articles about it in many F-Sharp programming books and online sources. We'll use it in some of our videos. This is how you can add type providers to your F-Sharp project using Visual Studio 2017. I've gone into my NuGet search window, and I've searched for F-Sharp.data, and that brought up the library called F-Sharp.data, which is the current home of the latest version of F-Sharp type providers, as well as a number of other tools related to data, some of it similar but with a different focus than the F-Sharp type providers. So it is well worth getting this library. It's very compact considering how much functionality it has. And as you can see over here, this is being updated nearly continuously. At the time of this recording, for instance, today is Monday, February the 19th, 2018, and the latest update to NuGet was published today. 
And as I said before, you can go back to any version in the release history all the way back to 1.0 if need be. Now, the F-Sharp 3.0 type providers are also here. I've uh, scrolled down a little bit and highlighted it. And there's currently only one version available, which is called the latest stable, 5.002. And this was released in January of 2016. So I don't think it's likely, it's not impossible, but I don't think it's likely that there'll be any more updates to this. If you do install this in an F-Sharp project in Visual Studio 2017, be aware that it will pull the trick of changing your F-Sharp.core library reference here to F-Sharp.core version 3 point something something, rather than the 4 point something that Visual Studio 2017 is using by default. After installing the NuGet package, I see one new assembly in my F-Sharp references, and it is called F-Sharp.data. Now, to use this assembly in F-Sharp Interactive, I follow my usual procedure, right-click on it, and send it to the interactive window. Then we'll open System, and we'll open F-Sharp Data, and we'll look at our first F-Sharp type provider. So, this is a type called Kentucky Derby Type Provider, and it's an instantiated instance of a type from the F-Sharp data library called HTML Provider. I'll explain the rest of this rather puzzling syntax later, but first, in order to do something interesting with this type, we need to instantiate it into an object. And here's how we can do that. I'm going to load the actual HTML data that's available at this URL on Wikipedia. It's an article on Wikipedia about the Kentucky Derby. A subject that interests me because I used to live in Kentucky. So here is the compilation of the type provider type. This takes a few moments. So we see we have now this type defined. Now I'm just going to put my URL into a variable. And now I'm going to apply the types to an external source of data. And the result is going to be this object called Derby Info, which contains the data that was fetched live from that URL site and represents it to F-Sharp in terms of the types defined by the type provider. Now that we have this Derby Info object, let's explore it. Right off the bat we see that it has three properties, lists, tables, and HTML. Let's look at the tables one. Now remember, all this data came from a single static HTML page that we just retrieved from Wikipedia. Here is a list of all the tables, and in every case where it was able to, it came up with a name for the table. Some tables didn't have any name, obvious, from the HTML context. But it found a table called winners, and inside of that it has a collection of information about winners called rows. Now this time it didn't come up with a clever name that's more meaningful, but we already have more strongly typed information about what was inside that HTML's tables than we could have easily gotten just by scrutinizing the source to the HTML ourselves. And to wrap that up, here's a little line of code or two that can take three properties from each row, which is statically typed, and display it to the console so we can take any part of the data that was in this table originally on the web page and extract each data element, and these are strongly typed data elements, see here race was one, is represented as an integer in the types created by the type provider. It just deduced that since all the numbers it found in that spot in the source were integers, it made it the integer type. 